Hi, I'm Simon from English Family in Korea and I'd like to share with you today the 10 things that I love about living in Korea. Okay, so number one on the list is the convenience of living in Korea. Everywhere you look, there are convenience shops nearly on every street corner you go to. There's a 7-Eleven or a GS25 or a Nice to See You or a Family Mart. There's just so many of them, you never have to travel very far. You can always get some milk or some toilet paper, whatever it is that you actually need. Even if you just need a snack, you can get a snack at 2 a.m. in the morning. One thing that you learn very quickly about living in Korea is that first sort of three weeks of living here, that's including all the beds, all the wardrobes, everything that we needed, all of the kitchen appliances, everything, we can get delivered very quickly. When I bought a bed in England, it took about six months for the damn thing to arrive. In Korea, it was the very next day and the lady apologized that it couldn't be delivered the same day. When we first lived in Korea, we had this crappy old car that we used to drive around. We'd been in a restaurant in Gyeongju and the battery had run out in the car. It happened quite a lot. We called the rescue service and the guy was literally 10 minutes. He came around in his car and then he fixed it, charged the battery, swapped it out and we were on our way. The whole thing took about 20 minutes from the phone call to actually leaving in the car. I've hiked up to the top of a mountain near Daegu and at the top there were people selling drinks and cup ramen. It is just everywhere you go, it is just super convenient and an easy place to live. Okay, so number two on the list is the low crime rate. Korea has almost zero petty crime. I hate to say it, my hometown of Liverpool, you cannot leave anything lying around. You know, if you leave your bike outside your house, it's gone. If you leave your handbag in a restaurant, it's gone. Your phone, gone. There's just no chance of you ever getting those kind of things back. Here, people just don't steal. I've seen a credit card on the floor, people just walking past. I've seen a bag on a park bench that nobody, that nobody touches. You know, if you've dropped something, people will just put it to one side on the path and just leave it there for you to come back, follow your tracks and then just find it again. When you get food delivered, the guys leave their motorbikes outside the apartment with their keys in. People leave their bikes unlocked. It's crazy. It just doesn't occur to the vast majority of Koreans to take other people's stuff. And not only that, you know, public places at night. In England, you couldn't go to a park at night. I certainly wouldn't let my kids out when it goes dark. But here, they come to the park, they come to Central Park, it's safe, it's really well used. There's loads of bright lights, there's tons of people around enjoying the facilities. Even 11, 12 o'clock at night, everywhere is just safe. Number three on the list is healthcare. There's been a lot in the papers back home about the state of the NHS. There's the stri doctor strikes and nurses strikes and there's n the waiting lists and having to call to see a GP in the morning at eight o'clock every morning. You know, you have to keep calling and hope you get an appointment for that day. And that's just to see a GP. You've got no chance of seeing a specialist. You have to be bleeding out your eyeballs before you can get into A&E quickly. We've been to the doctors twice since we've been here with my kids. My son has asthma and my daughter has eczema, so we needed to get those sorted. Our kids have universal medical insurance, which actually works. And you just find yourself a local specialist, and there's lots of them because, you know, they're all self-employed. And you make an appointment, you turn up. In fact, you don't even have to make an appointment. The last time I went with my daughter, we just turned up. You sign in in the clinic. You, we waited about 10 minutes. You have a choice of however many doctors happen to be working that day. You can see your favorite doctor if you want, which you may have to wait for if they're popular. Or I wasn't particularly bothered. We just thought, well, we'll just get the quickest one. So we were waiting about 10 minutes. We went in and saw the doctor. We were in there for a couple of minutes. And this is a skin specialist. It's not a GP. She was an absolute bona fide skin specialist. Um, she checked out my daughter's eczema. Uh, she gave us a prescription. We waited for the prescription outside for it to be printed for another couple of minutes and then we walked downstairs to the pharmacy. We waited in there for five minutes uh, while they sorted the medicine. We paid for the doctor. It cost about 6,000 won, which is about four pounds. And then we paid for the prescription, which was about three pounds. And that's for about five days medicine. I could not recommend the medical system enough. It is just amazing. Next up on the list is transportation. 
there are just so many ways to get around in Korea and they all work on time. There's plenty of options. Um, five minutes from where I live, there is a subway which goes from here right into Seoul. Um, from there, you can get the KTX high-speed train to pretty much anywhere in the country. There are bicycle lanes everywhere and they're not bicycle lanes on the road. They are like purpose-built cycle lanes actually on the pavement on the sidewalk so that you are safe when you're using them um, there's you can hire electric bicycles and electric scooters and electric mopeds buses are regular on time and they're clean but you know if I go around I usually use the subway or one of the electric scooters so in England it is absolutely essential to have a car we were here nine weeks before we had a car and I tell you something I didn't miss it we only bought a car about two weeks ago and I think we've used it like three times. It is just nice to live in a place where you really don't have to worry about public transport if you need it. Next on my list is civic pride. Koreans are very proud of where they live. You look around and there is no trash. They just do not drop litter. Everywhere is really well tended. You go to the park and the grass is cut. And the crazy thing is there are hardly any litter bins. When you look around and you've got some trash, you've had a drink or something, or you've had a coffee, you're walking around, you're expected to take your trash home with you uh, instead of leaving it on the street. I'm in Butron Central Park at the minute. And there's, as far as I know, there's only one trash can for the whole park. And there's just no litter. Also, Korea seems to spend an awful lot on civic art as well, which is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. You walk around the park, there's at least 10 statues and pieces of art that you can admire. And if you walk around the city, it's full. Just outside an office building, there'll be a sculpture or something that you can just enjoy. You know, it's nice to come out and not have to worry about dog poo everywhere or trash everywhere. It is just the places are clean and they're well looked after. Koreans do take pride in their, in their public spaces and their cities and their towns. And it, you know, you can tell that when you come here. Next on my list is a, is a subject really close to my heart and that's food. If you've only ever had Korean barbecue or you've had Korean fried chicken, that is just the tip of the iceberg where it comes to Korean food. It is so diverse. You could have a different type of food what you could have a different type of food every day for a whole year and never eat the same thing it is just crazy every town you go has its own speciality everywhere you go there's just new food to eat there, in, you go to a street market or a street corner or you're at the top of a mountain there'll be somebody selling hot food i'm sure koreans have like a thousand ways to cook a chicken or a vegetable pancake or whatever it is it may be that you're hankering for and the thing is though, because Korea is convenient as well, you can get food at 3 a.m. in the morning if you really want to. There'll always be somewhere where you can pick something up. Also, they have like a local delivery app and it puts Uber Eats to shame. You can get food delivered to anywhere you are. A while ago, we were hiking with some friends uh, in the woods and my Korean friends were like, let's get something to eat. I was like, we're in the woods. Like, how do we get something to eat? and they said well just get something so they called up a local sort of like they're called boon chicks and it's just like a greasy spoon cafe and we had fried rice and jajangmyeon which is sort of black bean noodles delivered into the middle of the woods we just set up a little picnic spot we told the guy where we were and the delivery guy came on his little scooter up the path delivered the food and um later on he came and collected all of the um all of the dirty plates and everything and took it back to the restaurant one thing though there's a lot of spicy food if you don't really like spicy then there's not much you can do about it koreans do like a bit of spice so make sure you train yourself up on a bit of spice before you come because the best food in korea is the spicy stuff they do it really well okay next on my list are the people Koreans are lovely. Generally, they keep themselves to themselves and they don't like interfering into other people's business. But once you sort of meet them and you're introduced to Koreans, they are really friendly and they just sort of want you to have a good time while you're here. They're really curious about foreign people, so you might get some stares on the subway. People sort of look at you, but they're not staring out of malice. They're just sort of curious about you and uh, they'll often strike up conversations. You could be sitting in a sauna or you could be sitting in a hot bath or something and you know, you're butt naked next to a fella and he'll just start chatting because you know they want to practice English or they, um, 
they went to America or they've been to Australia and they're just wondering where you're from and if you're enjoying yourself in Korea. They're just really lovely, warm people when you get to know them. Okay, so next on my list is another subject that's close to my heart coming from England is the weather here in Korea. As you can see, it is an absolutely gorgeous day here. It's a spring day. The cherry blossoms won't be long. It's going to be a couple of weeks before the cherry blossoms are out. And I think it's rained about six or seven hours in total since we arrived here in January. It's now sort of late March. Coming from England where you would expect rain sort of at this time of year every day, it is lovely not to have to put up with that. So the winters in Korea are really, really cold, but they're also bone dry. It does snow and you get a lot of snow in the mountains, but in the cities it doesn't tend to snow very much, um, but it is freezing cold it is really dry so you need a ton of moisturizer spring is just gorgeous once the sun sort of comes out and it comes out really quickly um, it changes from winter to spring really quickly and warms up really nicely so um, you've got that nice weather from sort of March up until May early June then the rainy season sort of kicks in about June up until the end of August where it's boiling hot and really humid. Once the weather sort of breaks at the end of September though, autumn is just fabulous. You've got sort of October, November, and then quite a lot of December where it's really not very cold. October and November are just amazing. The leaves are changing. Autumn is just a fabulous time of year. You know, it's like you've died and come to weather heaven. Okay, next on the list is natural beauty. Korea is just the most beautiful country 55 percent is actually mountains and they're covered in trees the rest lakes and rivers you've got nice beaches you go to jejido jejido is just like a national park which is like a volcanic island it's a, it's it's a subtropical island on the southwest coast you're never very far from a mountain to go walking or a bit of peace and quiet in even in the city in buchon there's like five mountains that you can go to there's even a mountain in downtown seoul crazy on the weekends, if we don't have any work, we often take the kids to one of the 22 national parks around the country. Juwangsan is absolutely my favorite. It's near Gyeongju. It's a bit, it's a bit further north than Daegu. But if you're in the neighborhood, forget Jirisan, go to Juwangsan. It is just absolutely the, one of the most beautiful places I have ever been. All right, and the last thing that I want to talk about is the public services. And that's not just sort of government run service or local government services but the amenities as well that you get in your local area dealing with the council or dealing with the government is just a lovely experience if you need a marriage certificate everything can be done in these little local offices they even have machines where you can put in your ID card and you can get a copy of your university transcript or you can get your marriage certificate printed for a fee it costs like two or three pounds it's just crazy convenient again convenience comes into things like that but it's not just that i mean the public services that people have and people expect just in this park alone there is badminton courts that are free there's gate ball which is kind of like croquet which is free there's tennis courts which are free there's the children's playground there's the basketball court and they're all used and they're all used daily they're used in the morning they're used in the afternoon and they're used late at night there's also like a huge outside gym as well there's a splash park just over there which they're revamping at the minute they've just torn up all the floor and um, they're just replacing all the floor ready for when the hot weather comes in may and these are all free services just right on your doorstep even when we went hiking up um, we went hiking up Gummersan a couple of weeks ago and halfway up the mountain there were these like little exercise gyms where you could if it wasn't a big enough challenge for you to, to hike up a mountain you could do a workout halfway through there are free public toilets as well everywhere you go every park has a free public toilet and they're open 24 hours a day when was the last time you saw <laughs> there's some dogs barking over there when was the last time that you saw a free public toilet in the UK doesn't exist it, they just don't exist it is just such a nice experience to live here just the convenience the food the people the weather everything sort of adds up you know just to one of the most lovely places in the world so that's it, that's my top 10. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell so that you never miss a video. Thanks very much for watching. 
and uh, I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much. Bye.